Good morning everyone. It is Wednesday morning the 24th of March and we are going to read again from John's Gospel this morning for our land readings. This morning is again it's a full chapter but it's a well-known chapter one of my favourite ones which is John 13. So let's hear what it says together. Before the Passover celebration Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, protested. you will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, Then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, A person who is bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That's what he meant when he said, Not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I am doing? You call me teacher and Lord and you're right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to go and wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are no greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends you. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but this fulfills the scriptures that say, the one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this beforehand, so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the father who sent me. Now Jesus was deeply troubled and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the, at the table. Simon Peter motioned him to ask, who is he talking about? So the disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, it is one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. And Jesus told him, hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasure, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God received glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you cannot come where I am going. So now I am giving you a new cup, a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. The love for you have for another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, you cannot go with me now but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord, he asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me? 
I tell you the truth, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Amen. It's a really well-known part of the Bible, a really well-known um, part of John's Gospel about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. It's a, it's a passage which has been replicated in churches and, and meetings right the way around the world as people get a basin and, and they go and wash other people's feet. But do we really know what Jesus is doing? Do we understand the significance of it? He washes their feet because they've been out on the dusty, dirty road and they've got, they've got dirty. And as he comes to, to Peter, and as Peter says, no Lord, wash all of me. Jesus says, you're already washed. Meaning you're already forgiven. But your feet are dirty. You, 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 we do things each day which we shouldn't do. Uh, and we sin, even the strongest of us, even Peter. I mean, right at the very end of that chapter, Peter's told, three times you'll deny me before the rooster crows. So Jesus says that we need to come to him and be refreshed. But that starts, first of all, by being entirely washed. Not all the disciples were, Judas wasn't. But Jesus still reaches out to him. Jesus doesn't stop reaching out in love. And that sets us a huge challenge. Is there somebody who doesn't like us? Is there somebody who does things against us? We need to keep reaching out to that person. We don't give up on people. Jesus never gave up on us. Jesus will never give up on us. Jesus keeps on reaching out and he wants us to do the same. We need to be washed entirely by Jesus. We need to have our feet refreshed by Jesus. And then he tells his disciples to go and do the same to others. When the disciples and Jesus arrived in that room, tradition would have dictated that there would have been a servant in that room who washed their feet. Or the host, or the, son, the eldest son of the host would have washed their feet. But from what we can gather, it's only Jesus and his disciples in the upper room. There's no servants, um, there's no host, it's just them. And, and, and they're doing this by themselves. So nobody was there to serve them. And Jesus, who is their leader, gets down on his hands and knees and serves them by washing their feet. Jesus showed them that to lead others, they have to serve. And the same is true for us. In whatever part of, the, of God's family that we are in, we are called to serve. Even if we think that we are in a position of leadership and what that might mean, it actually means service. And we are to serve one another. We're not to think of ourselves as better than anybody else or more esteemed or, or that's beneath me. It's the opposite actually. If we want others to do things, we have to lead by example. You know, I oft, I, my first boss I ever worked for um, said to me, the, the best way if you want people to do things for you is to let them see you doing it. Uh, and he would have done every menial task in the shop um, before asking anybody else to do it. And he showed that he was prepared to do it. And that's the sort of model that Jesus is doing here. He has showed the disciples he's prepared to wash their feet. He's prepared to serve them. And in fact, that's what it is for him, is to serve. He's about to go and die on the cross. Something which nobody else can do, only him. To serve us. Are we prepared to serve? Something to think about this morning. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word. Lord, on such a glorious and bright day outside, as, as the sunshine warms us, we thank you that your word brings us warmth and encouragement. It brings us the reassurance of salvation, of the washing of our souls by Jesus and what he's done. But Lord, may we also be challenged in where we serve and in how we serve. Realising that we don't serve people, but we serve you. Lord, help us to serve faithfully, uh, wholeheartedly, uh, and to your glory and honour. So Lord, thank you again for this day. And be with us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks folks for joining in this morning. 
Um, we're back for our Bible study this evening at eight o'clock. If you can, uh, sorry, at half seven, if you can join us for that, please do so. And then back tomorrow morning again at half nine as we then dip into John chapter 14. So in the meantime, take care and God bless.